All right. Hi, Lazar. Hey. How are you, man? Great day yesterday. Good start. How are you feeling? I feel great, actually. My body feels amazing. I'm just a little bit tired from full day of walking, uh, opening ceremony, go from one bus, go to another, go to, like... We went to a lot of places yesterday, so yeah, I'm just a little bit tired, but I don't feel sore. I feel amazing, actually. Okay, so a lot of bus driving yesterday as well. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's introduce your coach who's with you. Um, tell us a bit about him or what you guys do since when you train together and stuff like that. So get Okay, so this, well. this is Panos. He's my coach for uh, two years now. Uh, we met uh, in Dubai, 2018. He was not my coach back then, but uh, I immediately in 2018 felt some some connection because they they took me uh, as as their their own athlete. Also, that first first year, 2018, I came without a coach, and the ATP team, ATP Lab team, took me like I was one of them. And I was so thankful. And we actually didn't talk until next year's Dubai, where I also came without a coach. And the same thing happened. I, I had some stomach problems, and they were like, they were offering help. Do you want to go? Do Do you want us to go to uh, a pharmacy? Do you want us to help you somehow? Stuff like this. And uh, yeah, I was so thankful for that. That uh, after. Uh, that Dubai 2019, we started working together for the season 2020 and 2021. Okay, good. Hi, Panos. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you too. So, from what Lassad tells us, I hear that you live and coach in Dubai. Is that correct? No, no, no. We just met in Dubai uh, at a competition. Okay. Dubai Cross the Championship. But he lives and uh, works in Greece. Ah, okay. Where in Greece? Greece? Yeah. In Athens, actually. Ah, okay, nice. Cool. And so you guys see each other a lot or you work on digital base or how, how do you guys handle that? We actually have a daily chat and uh, daily, you know, she uh, says me everything he's doing every day. We actually talk from the morning to the night, and uh, we're trying to visit each other sometimes during the season. Lazar is coming from Greece for seven to ten days. I'm visiting him. And last time I visited him two times in semifinals and for the preparation for the, for the games, it was uh, ten days just before he left from Serbia. So this is how we work trying to meet each other during the season. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, especially in last year with the pandemic, you you wouldn't have seen each other a lot more anyway. So probably yeah. good to, to have already some practice in working this way. So before we jump into talking about yesterday and the last couple of days you guys spent in the States preparing or the, for the last preparation for the games, um, tell us a bit about how you guys prepared for the games, you know, like maybe the last 12 months, like was there something special, something different than the years before? Something that, yeah, just what happened. So uh, full season, we are working on my weaknesses. We, we uh, hit what I'm the worst at usually. And uh, That's what I like about uh, Panos that he he just doesn't have any mercy. He will he will he will push me until I can't go anymore. Same like same happened uh, when he came uh, to coach me for 10 days before the games. It was the worst two weeks of my life. I <laughs> I swear to you, <laughs> like he pushed me so much that I I I just couldn't go anymore and. He was just telling me it's better to have this now than at the games. <laughs> like just, just be focused. You will, you will be the best at the games. You will 
have the best uh, recovery. You know, just push through this and we'll be okay. So, yeah, now after day one and four events, I'm feeling good. So, yeah, I, I, I believe him now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds like a lot of fun. Panos, <laughs> trust me, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just joking. Um, so, Panos, wh why are you doing it this way? You know, like, I mean, obviously, as you said, that, that it's not happening later, but is there like, because some others, they, they try to prepare in smaller steps. So, so why are you pushing him like, to the absolute max probably before, before the games? Yeah, well, actually, it's not like to pushing him that hard. It's when you're doing your weaknesses day per day, it's much more harder than doing a lot of volume training, but doing the stuff you are like. Yeah. That's why Lazar is feeling, you know, he was destroyed because doing every day training of your weaknesses then it's 100% harder than just swimming and uh, running. Stuff like Lazar is really, really good. So, uh, so it's not that I try to push him hard and destroy him just to have this feeling. It is, it is that I want, I want him to, to feel that, that hard in the stuff he's not good. It's more mentally more mm -hmm. mental preparation rather than physical preparation. Okay. Yeah, uh, that, that's a pretty interesting topic. Like, I come from the background of a pro professional tennis player, and there's also always this topic, you know, like balancing, working on your strength via working on your weaknesses. And obviously, almost everybody prefers to work on the strength. So when you say that you, you, Lazar, you said you fully focused on your weaknesses, if you balance it like weaknesses and strength in percentage, how, how would you put it into numbers like from the training yeah. schedule? Well, uh, you need to work on your weaknesses, but you also need to keep your strength sharp. Yes. So you, I'm, I'm good in, I'm really good in some stuff and we need to keep it good because 100 points and winning the event is a big deal. Uh, and uh, we, we were working on our strengths also. Don't get us wrong, but we were killing the strengths also. Uh, I would say we, we probably went like 70% on weaknesses like barbell cycling, thrusters, lifting. Uh, short, sprints. short sprints we we done a bunch of sprints and uh, we went like 30% I would say on rowing rowing, low balls rope climbs, skiing, stuff like that like we are just we, and we a just little bit of swimming as well I guess yeah a bit of swimming yeah actually I work, I work with another coach mm -hmm. for the swimming his name is Nemo mm -hmm. uh, Nemanja He's from Canada and he was, uh, he's Serbian actually. And he contacted me from 2019 or 2018, maybe. Uh, also in, in Dubai after the swimming event. So yeah, I got a good crew of coaches. So Dubai is the magic place for you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, one nice. of my favorite, it's one of my favorite competitions and I, I like that, that place. Cool. So, talking about swimming, let's jump into yesterday's events. Like, Terry, how how did it feel to be, like to get in at second place in the first event of the games? Like, I knew Yone is really good swimmer. He was training to be Olympic, to, to be Olympian for I don't know, fourteen years, I think, and I knew. He, like there's no chance of me catching him on the swimming. Mm -hmm. I hoped I, I can get close to kayak, but kayak was not so important. Like you need to push really hard to get somebody on the kayak. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when when we started in the first 100 meter meters, he took off 50 meters. I'm like, no way, I'm getting this guy. So I just try to stay close. Uh, uh, 
uh, like Amanda Barnhart was swimming really good mm-hmm. and I I was a little bit smart so I went behind her and I drafted off her <laughs> I knew I knew guys were, were not swimming that fast so I drafted a little bit of her and then on the turn because it was 800 swim 800 back it's a mile uh, on the turn I saw Pikowski and he took me over and I was not uh, too bothered too stressed about this because I knew there's a kayak. I just need to be close to him and then we'll, we'll fight each other on the kayak. And uh, I drafted off him for good 800 meters. He, he, he's done all the work. I just, <laughs> I was just easy swimming behind him. And when we stopped to take our fins off, he, with his thumb, he went and grabbed his chip. Mm-hmm. And he <laughs> unzipped his chip, chip timer, like, and without it, you can't finish the event. So <laughs> I was, I was hearing while I took my things off, I was hearing, oh no, oh no. <laughs> and I just went on the beach, took my kayak and I, I didn't see anybody until the last, let's say 300 meters kayak. I turned around and there, there was a guy, Alex Vigno, was mm-hmm. pushing kayak like crazy big guy, big arms, big, big shoulders. And he was kayaking like crazy. I was like, you will not catch me, you will not catch me. And I started kayaking just to finish it. So yeah, it was, it was actually really nice event because doing kayak, like you, you can't really go all out for 45 minutes of kayak. You, you were just going like at, let's say 80%. So you can see all the <laughs> sight, sight around the beach. There, everything was so nice. You, 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 you could see the Madison and the Capitol and everything was so nice. I'm like, I, I, during this, I was really enjoying the moment. And, uh, it's a bit like a holiday moment. then for you. I was really <laughs> stuff like this. Did you take some pictures as well? No. <laughs> I would if I took my phone with me <laughs> <laughs> okay and then when you when you actually finished like how was that for you i mean still even though you, you are strong and in, in swimming and then also kayaking i mean it's still a big thing you know to start it, off it, like it, that right it was, it was one one hour and ten minutes of work and uh, you when you finish on the finish line you also need to take the kayak uh, you need to jump off and swim to the finish line. And after the uh, after holding kayak for so long, after holding the pedal, you you drop the pedal, you go inside, and your arms are not. I just started swimming <laughs> like my like my arms are spaghetti. <laughs> I just finished, just finished. And after I finished, uh, it was like I I didn't push this event next to somebody like one hundred percent. I would. I think I would collapse on the finish line. It was okay like this. I, I was, I, I recovered pretty quickly because I, I didn't, when I didn't go all out, all out trying to race with somebody. Okay, cool. And so, congratulations to that great result as well. Thank you. Um, makes us really proud. Good. And um, how was the rest of the day for you? Like, how do you feel? But the other, like, what are your feelings about the other three events you had yesterday? I, I felt uh, great on all of the events. Uh, second event was uh, big flips and muscle ups with some uh, sled pulling. Uh, I actually knew big was not my biggest strength. Mm-hmm. So I needed to push on muscle ups, which I did. And uh, yeah, I, I took 13th place on this one. It was okay. I hoped for top 10. But it was okay. You, you, you can't really do anything about the other guys. You need to give your all and then see what happens. Uh, sprint. I made a huge mistake. A huge mistake. On. Uh, uh, I was thinking it, it's longer. It's longer run. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking the guys will shut down. And actually, we just have uh, like 350 meters of straight line. And then it's over. When you go around the corner, you can't overtake in the corner. And then in, you, you, you go 350, 
corner and then just finish line. And I was thinking there's more running after the corner and, and there wasn't. So I took uh, my worst finish yesterday on the sprint. It was 13th place. And then when Dave Castro announced the wall walks and thrusters, it was my actually my big weakness. Wall walks and thrusters, I barely finished it on the open wall walks. And uh, thrusters are my weakness for a long time. And yesterday I took 10th in this event, which was really good for me. Like shorter guys had huge advantage mm -hmm. uh, on thrusters and also on wall walks because wall walks were, were uh, it was same for everybody. But for the shorter guys, it was still okay. It was it was not my height. It, like for them to then need to go longer distance, it was sure. it was their height. So it was just an um, event made for shorter athletes, and I was really happy to take top ten in this one. And yeah, today is the day off, and uh, Friday we start with the uh, ski, rope climb, and uh, sand back carry. Mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to try to win. So yeah. Nice. Really good. So, Panos, for you as the coach, you, you actually did a good job for the, good, for the first day then with working on the weaknesses. And then, like, must have been ups and downs for you. First, these mistakes with the running and then finishing off like that on such a weak, weakness. How how was it for you as a coach? Like, yeah, well, we knew that Lazar could have a good start. We knew it, and uh, we were our only, you know, wonder was to not make any mistake like Fikowski did in the first event because it it was his first event at the Cross Games, and you never know what might happen. But Lazar was one hundred percent focused, and he did the work. He, Took second place, the best scenario to do this because we knew that Koski was hard to overtake him. So he started really, really good with 97 points. Then we had an event with the flips where in practice the flips was really hard for Lazar. But we had also 48 mass laps. Even Lazar is a big guy, he worked very much to the mass laps. So he managed to, to cover this you know this uh, time he lost on the flips and well the 13th place was was good was good yeah i was also expecting a top 10 in this one but because he finished master really really fast he went to the second uh pick flips he did three and then he stuck for over 30 to 40 seconds on the fourth flip and i thought that it would be a disaster then but okay he was again focused he relaxed a little bit and go to finish the workout. So 13th place in this one was good. Then in the sprint, okay, it might be this mistake that cost us like 10 spots, but still we need to work a lot on spreading events. We need to work more because he took 13th place. And if it is, this mistake didn't happen, he probably got 15th to 20th place. It, it would be good, but... It's not that we are aiming. We are aiming top 10 in everything. And then when the last event, when Castro announced the last event, I was thinking, oh, we have wall walks that Lazar didn't go good in the open. We have thrusters that we know it's our weakness, but we have the board really, really much. We had thrusters day per day. <laughs> but when, when, I saw, when I saw the first hit, I realized it was an endurance workout. And I knew that Lazar can go really, really good on a big event. And that happened. He took 10th place, really, really good for the first day. Nice. Yeah, it's really interesting to hear these insights from, from both of you, also from the coach view. Thank you for, for sharing that as well. Um, Lazar, like most of the people never get to go to the games as an athlete like what's happening on on an event day like yesterday aside the workouts you know like how is it all going down like um can you describe us a little bit like share the experience of, of what's actually happening all day sure 
Sure. So yesterday, uh, it was the uh, first day of the games. It was a big day. Uh, so we, I, I, I woke up uh, five, uh, five fifteen. Did a pack, did everything I need. Went to take a breakfast, and then went to the Alliant Energy Center. Checked in, and then when you check in, you need to go to the bus. And they were like messing with us. You need to bring one bag with everything. Uh, then they say you can bring two bags. Then they say you can also you can just take one bag. And they say you can take two bags. So like it was like do I do I bring two bags or do I bring one bag? Just tell me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we went to the bus. And uh, actually, that's the, I, I feel like the bus is where athletes connect the most. Like we were just sitting and laughing, like Lucas, like Scott Manchik, mm -hmm. sat, uh, sat next to Luca, and he was giving him life lessons. Like you need to enjoy, <laughs> you need to have fun, you need to like ex experience it. Uh, you 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 will you like he, he said fifteenth, twelfth, fourth, third, whatever you will always want more. So you need to enjoy the moment. Uh, and actually, he's the guy who this is his tenth games. He knows it also. Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty nice to chat with Scott in the bus. Sean Sweeney was in front. He was making some jokes and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, full bus was laughing. It was it was really nice. But when we came to the beach, like atmosphere changes a little bit. You go outside and you feel everybody is stressed. And they were pushing, the, and then after the bus, we had a briefing. They were pushing the briefing for 40 minutes, and then they gave us, like, you have 15 minutes to warm up for the event. And in those 15 minutes, you need to take the fins, you need to take the chip, you need to take the cap, you need to go to the toilet. Like, there's no warm-up back. So, and, and, and they were, they were, they was messing with our head. He said, go inside the water and wait for me in the water. And water was not that cold, but when we went inside and stayed there for 10 minutes waiting for Dave to do the beep, Sounds it became it became cold. Like everybody was shivering, and it was also, as Pano says, it was also the stress. So yeah, it was mental games from Dave from the event one. And uh, yeah, it, then it was swimming event. After the swimming event, they picked us up and. Uh, dropped us at Alliant Energy Center. You need to check in then from this, for the event too. So for each event, you need to check in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they know you're here. And uh, yeah, after it was second event with pigs, uh, we actually had time to warm up for that one when you, we got to try the pig. And after that one, you actually didn't have time to uh, cool down. They're, they're just like, pack your stuff we are going to the sprint and uh, yeah we just went to the running area where the sprint was and uh, warm up there a little bit and did the sprint after the sprint oh guys now you stay here change in your clothes for a uh, ceremony. ceremony opening ceremony and then you walk then you wait for your flag you walk your you walk the walk with you please bump with dave and yeah it was it was nice that was really nice we were proud to represent our country that was really nice like two of us two brothers same house we are wearing a flag it was really really nice nice experience and after the ceremony dave comes you guys are doing wall walks and thrusters go warm up you go inside take your stuff go to the coliseum warm up for the last event and uh, then yeah last last event was really special because it was it was friday night lights yeah. at the coliseum mm -hmm. you go outside and full crowd everybody's like screaming yelling like at one moment they were screaming so hard that i think the floor was shaking <laughs> <laughs> maybe you were nervous too <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> and uh, yeah finish the event one uh, finish the event four uh go to the ice bath 
recover, eat, recover, eat, recover, eat, sleep. So okay. yeah, that's it's a long day. Actually, it's it's it was a really long day. Like so, it but, it wasn't the workouts. It's just the energy. The you need to be on time. You need to like you understand me. It's it sounds of, it yeah, sounds a, a bit like a drill business. camp. You know, like it sounds more like a drill camp from the military than a sports event. Actually, how you describe it, it to me now? And it was four events a day yesterday. <laughs> For the yesterday it was four events and on Friday there's five events. Like I don't know how this will look. <laughs> so when when did the first event start again? What time? Friday? No, yesterday. Uh nine. And when did the last event finish? Six. No, no, five, 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 five. Five, six. Yeah. And when did you go to bed yesterday then? Uh, 10. Okay, that's a long day from 5 to 10 doing yeah. all that. Yeah, I, I slept good today. Yeah, good. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> so, and, and what do you eat like on a day like yesterday? You know, like how did you, what, what, was, what are you eating? What was your breakfast? What were snacks? Did well, you have a lunch? I, I I tr I usually on the competitions try not to change much, mm -hmm. but uh, in the US you have uh, you don't have stuff that you're used to. A little, so I tr we try to get used to the uh, all the food uh, since we came and it was seven eight eight seven eight days ago, and yeah yesterday breakfast was just a sandwich with uh, sandwich eggs and bacon and oats. And I, I actually couldn't finish it. I, I, I just ate half of sandwich and half of oats. I, that usually doesn't happen to me. I eat everything and I ask for more. But yesterday I couldn't. And uh, yeah, after the event one, I took some dates, some Gatorade, some water, and then I ate. And then after the event uh, two... I had a meal, a uh, big meal, like bigger meal than I had before first two events. What was it? Uh, it was uh, beef with uh, sweet potato and uh, some salad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I also had a snack. I had a fruit, had the fruit, and uh, mm, that's it. After the event uh, three... Uh, we had more time then, mm -hmm. so I also ate again. Uh, I ate chicken and uh, chicken and rice with some pepper, and I also snacked <laughs> with it. So yeah, and uh, after the event uh, four, we I ate like three times oats with protein and fruit, and peanut butter jelly, full meal, full two meals. Uh, yeah, I ate a lot after. Yeah, but I think that's necessary as well. Huh? Otherwise, if you have a day like that, I mean, the stress level, even if you joyful or you like excited in a positive way, this is probably a lot of stress, I imagine, plus all the workouts and all that. So, I mean, if you don't want to lose five to 10 kilos on the first day, you, exactly. need, to, you need to fuel up. And you say like in the bus you were all the athletes. So how is that like Panos? Are you coaches then also all together in a separate bus or like how is it going down for the coaches? We as coaches we are not exist for crossing. <laughs> we have to do everything on our own. So uh, if you have your own car, you have to follow the buses, or if you don't have a car, you are taking the Uber and just follow follow its location. But it was only the first day that we had an event outside the Aligned and Center, so it is it is good. It is good for us. No need to, to transfer during the day. It is all into the big uh, location, the big, the big arena. It is a, an arena with the uh, Colosseum, the North Park, so everything is happening there, no need to transportation. 
Okay, but I imagine, like, I only know it from the bigger tennis events, you know, like, you have um, the accreditations, like, the cards, you know, like, your IDs hang, yeah, that yeah. you carry with you, and then there's obviously areas where only athletes and coaches go in, yeah. and so you, you separate like that. From there the, is, from there is, this is, this is the coaches, that you have access to the warm-up area, to a specific booth on uh, the spectator seats. Uh, it is actually, overall, overall, it is working good. It was because I was uh, here also in 2019 with uh, another athlete. And as I can compare, it is working good. The stuff is, is working good. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's also important. If they want to progress and everything is pushing forward, obviously, it must be really professional organization as well. Yeah, Especially if you, if you demand that much from the athletes, you know, um, it needs to be well organized. So how is your, your rest day today? How, how is that? What's going down today? Well, uh we will go to the Alliance Energy Center to sweat a little bit, do some machines, active recovery. Mm -hmm. And then we booked a PT uh, with uh, Aerosti, the sponsors of the games. And yeah, after this, we'll go buy some meals for tomorrow and uh, rest for the rest of the day. So you guys, you, you are in an apartment or you, you book a hotel or how do hotel. you guys live? Hotel. So it's, in a hotel, we, we we don't have the kitchen, so we need to buy our meals. But there are, but there there's a bunch of places where we can buy good food, so it's not really a problem. Pizza Hut, McDonald's, and so on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Luca and Diana are with you guys as well, same hotel. Yeah. No, actually, me and Luca are sharing a room, and Jordan and Panos are sharing a room. Oh, okay, cute, cool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's working closely together. Yes. Are you actually working together as well then there or like, I mean, obviously you need to talk a little bit about, about it. How is that? Like, how do you guys handle that? It's a special situation huh? with, with your brother. It's, it's probably good and bad. I don't know. How, how is no, it? For me and Luca, for me and Luca is actually really good. We, yeah. we help each other a lot. Like we are, we are in the same team. We said this, it's, it's not uh, ATP lab and forge concept is, Duke's brothers, and uh, then they're helping us to achieve our potential. Okay, and you as the coaches, you, you guys working together as well? Yeah, till I arrived here and I met Jorn. I have met Jorn back in the uh, semifinals. We were sharing the same room, uh, the boys, the boys' apartment. And uh, since I arrived here, everything is going really good with Jorn. He's a really nice guy, really organized. So we're doing what really, really good work together to help the boys do their best. Yeah, cool. Is there anybody else with you guys? No, no. no. but it's a good team. Yeah, yeah I mean, we are not allowed to travel. We had an exception to travel. Only one athlete and one coach could travel from the Europe to the US. Okay. So yeah, then it's actually quite a big benefit eh, if you have... A good team of four then working yeah, together good. because you need, really yeah, you need to organize a lot of stuff. And yeah. Good. How is the how are the next couple of days looking for you guys? So Friday are the next events. What's happening after that? The same as uh, that happened yesterday. I think <laughs> just eat some food, do some workouts. I I actually don't know. This is my first game, so we'll see. A lot of sleeping as well. N napping between the events and sleeping in the night, yeah, for sure. Yeah. How many rest days do you guys have when you make it to the end? No, just tomorrow. And then just, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Just, just today, rest day. And from tomorrow, we'll full, start. We'll full, start for full three this. days. So yesterday was the warm-up. And from tomorrow, we'll have three full days of competition. Okay. And it's insane. We have 11 more events. That's a lot. That's what what is your goal? What, what is your goal now, Lassa? Uh, same same as I 
I, I made a goal when I came here. It was a uh, rookie of the year mm -hmm. and it was uh, top 10. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I can do more. Like, I don't, I'm not scared of anybody. I, I, I'm, I think like I'm better than any in most of the events. If I make mistake, I can go sub mm -hmm. uh, under 15 spot. But other than that, even on my weakest movements, I was 10. So uh, it will be good, I think. We will nice. focus on every event we have. We will focus event per event. And we will try to do our best in every event. Mm -hmm. Just try not to think of anyone else. Just focus on our performance in every next event. That's the plan. And we will see in the end. Nice. What we manage. Good. Yeah, I think that that's, that's a good way to handle it, right? You have your top 10 goal for, for each event, and then you see where it's going from there. Exactly. So, and, um, oh, sorry, are you talking to your girlfriend during the, the games? Or? She's the only person I, I talk to. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, got, I got like a million messages on Instagram, on Viber, WhatsApp, all the social media, like all a bunch of the requests. I, I, I really want to respond to everybody, but after the games. Yeah. Right now, I don't want to. I don't want to say waste waste my energy, but I want to be focused on the on the stuff that I need to do. So Anya is the only person I talk to. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe for some people that was a weird question, but as I know you guys, you are so focused. I was interested in knowing if you talk to anybody, and I, I guess yeah. if anybody, like, then that's probably she, your girlfriend. She's actually my uh, my mental coach. I would say, like she keeps me, she keeps me in in good mind space. Yeah. You need a strong woman if you want to be a successful man. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> that's what they exactly. say. Cool. So, yeah, uh, then, I mean, if it's like that, then I'm even more thankful that you take the time now to, to speak to us and talk to us. I mean, not a problem. It's a you know, like, as I already... That's, that's the least we can do for you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that. And, um, I mean, I'm sitting here smiling all the time and, and enjoying it because I really am a big fan of you guys at, as athletes. Um, I really, really have big respect for the determination and the focus you guys have. And yeah, it also makes me proud to, to work with you guys and that you have that success now. So thank, thank you. you very much um, for speaking to us now. Um, we will stop that now so you can go back to focus. And yeah, I, I really, really wish you all the best for the thank next you. days. Um, I hope you you achieve even more than you dream of and um yeah let, let's see what's happening and also panos thank you for the insights and for taking the time as well good to get to know you and let's see where you guys end up please say hi to jörn and luca also sure. all, I, all the best to them and then let's have another talk when you guys are back home and exactly. see what happens sure. until then. Then we can talk about how, how it went. Yes, absolutely. Okay, guys, take care. Speak to you soon. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.